Welcome to the Open Door Sunday School class. We're so glad that you have joined us today. My name is Katherine Bunce. Today we're going to study Psalm 91, which is the secret place of safely abiding in the presence of God. Psalm 91 is a song and a prayer that contains principles and precepts which require our response. As part of their daily routine, our Jewish brothers and sisters are reciting the scripture every morning and every evening with the Shema, standing in faith in the word of the Lord. Yes, it's that important that his word floods into our hearts and overflow into our lives. What are some of the safest places in the world? Well, how about a bomb shelter or a bank vault or maybe a storm shelter? In our text, we actually find a shadow is the safest place in the world. Where do people run to find their safe place, if not to God? Well, some to an unhealthy relationship, maybe or some to a bar, some withdraw just into depression. So what do we find security in? Our savings, our investments, how about a, an alarm system? We have become really good at seeking out a great variety of secret hiding places. Well, the only safe and impregnable fortress to which we can flee is the protection of God. Message Bible says, if you hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of trouble. I'll give you the best care if you'll just get to know me and trust me. Jonathan Kahn writes in his book, The Book of Mysteries, the holiest place on earth was called the Holy of Holies. It was the innermost chamber of the temple in Jerusalem. It could only be entered on the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur. It was there that the most important event of the biblical year took place the act of atonement, pardoning of the sins of the people. The holiest act in the holiest place on the holiest day. Do you know how many people witness this holy of events? Only one, and that was the high priest who performed it. He was the only one that could go into the holy of holies. It was made actually for only one person and the glory of God. So it all took place in secret. The most holy event was the most secret of events. The most holy moment was the most secret moment. And the most holy of places is a secret place. It is wherever you make it. It's where you go to be with God. It's the place that can only contain one person, just you, and the presence of God and nothing else. So the secret place must be totally separate, totally secret, and totally apart from the rest of the world and just enough room for just you and God. Shall we pray? Dear God, we are before you today wanting to learn from Psalms 91. Open up our understanding so that we do not miss the promises that you have given us. Let us rest your arms and know that when we are in that secret place, we can be our real selves with you, warts and all. You see us from the inside and you love us unconditionally. Father, we thank you for that and we continue with our message. There are three links to a chain that we're going to be studying today. 
the abiding life that produces the assuring life which leads to the abundant life and these are all listed in Psalm 91. We'll start with the abiding life and that is Psalms 1 through, uh, excuse me, verses 1 through 4. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And a fowler catches birds in a trap or in a snare and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Now a buckler is a small shield. So the theme in this part of it is security. God preserves those who abides in him and he loves them. The psalmist is talking about the dwellers, not the visitors, as the high priest was once a year. You have an open invitation to come into the presence of God and dwell in the secret place. That's where he meets us, gives us guidance, and shows us his will. Four metaphors are used, one through four, for security and four divine names. The four metaphors, he gave us the secret place, the shadow, refuge, and fortress. Now these are the promises of God. He gave us four divine names, Most High, Almighty, the Lord, my God, and these are the persons of God. Let's talk about those. <clears throat> Most high is Elion. It's a title which cuts every threat down to size. God cannot be compared to anyone. He is above all things and ruler over everything. Almighty is Shaddai. The name which lets us know that God is all powerful and sufficient, a sovereign ruler who is present at all times. Refuge is the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. Moses was assured with both I am and I am with you. It reveals God's nature by stressing his absolute faithfulness to fulfill his promises. Fortress, my God, is Elohim. God is made intimate by the possessive, my God. It reveals to us God's intensity in revealing his power, preservation, and his preparation. Under the shadow of the Almighty, well, a shadow isn't normally much protection unless you're talking about being behind your brother as he protects you. Now that's pretty good. Or better yet, in this case, when God's wings are hovering inches above you in a protective mode, like a protective mother eagle. Well, my shadow is not much protection for anyone, but when it belongs to the Almighty, shadow is a strong protection. Example, what about mm, a rabbit's shadow? Oh, what about a bear cub in his mama's shadow? Under his wings, this is the analogy of a mother hen and it expresses tender care with which God watches over us in our safety. The safest place in the world is in fellowship with God. In verse four, it talked about a shield that's large and static, 
So if they were on a battlefield and the other people are using arrows, they could hide behind the shield and those arrows would not harm them. But if you have a big shield and a sword and you're trying to do hand-to-hand -hand combat, that big shield is going to get you in serious trouble. So in that situation, you need a small shield or a buckler so that you can move it around with your sword and it will be so that you are protected in that situation. A shield, yes, he will come in between us and all of our enemies to preserve us from their attacks. God's faithfulness, well, that is never deserting his people in the time of their need. So the abiding life produces the assuring life. Now this is a life without fear. <clears throat> And this is 5 through 13 of Psalm 91. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrows that fly by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Now, pestilence here is a fatal epidemic disease. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near you. <clears throat> For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands, in the angels' hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. So five and six is talking about day and night, terror by night. Well, because we're usually normally or naturally apprehensive in the dark, or because the night exposes us to dangers of different kinds. So our fears magnify any sound or disturbance in the night. Oh, what was that? That's kind of how we react. So what dangers do we face? Snares and pestilence, it said in verse three. Arrows were in verse five. Plagues, that was verse 10. Stones, 11 and 12. And lions and snakes, that was in verse 13. Most of these dangers strike unseen against the strong which will make them as weak as the ones that are help, or as helpless as the ones that are weak. So what are the modern equivalent to these ancient perils? Snares, well, those may be traps, or how about a debt that you didn't know about? Pestilence, how about COVID-19 or mad cow disease? Arrows, well, those are fiery darts of the enemy, negative thoughts. Plagues, how about bird flu, SARS, salmonella? Those are all going to be plagues that we have. Stones, these are things that trip you up and make you stumble. How about a lie or confusion? Lions, mm, those are just things that scare you the most, but you run away and not to God. Snakes, think of the Garden of Eden. That's the devil, or it's just evilness. <clears throat> Verse 10, we may have to go through the valley, go through the battle, or go through some kind of difficulty, but it will not bring evil to us. And in Psalm 16, it says, keep your eyes on the Lord. Verse 11 and 12, for he has... He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. 
in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now, the reason that that's resonating with you, that's a verse that Satan quotes to Jesus when he tempts him in the wilderness in Matthew 4. Angels, oh, God's miraculous protectors. God is called the Lord of hosts, or he's called the Lord of the angel armies. And that's speaking of his angels, which are under his control and always do his bidding. They guard believers and they guide believers. We should rest satisfied that they are always intent upon doing their job. Throughout scripture, they are always ready to obey and execute the commands of God. We need to always give thanks to God for the invisible and supernatural ministry of his angels. Verse 13 says, you shall tread not only as a survivor, but as a victor. Luke 10 says, behold, I give you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And we're talking about evil here. So the uh, assuring life leads us to the abundant life, and that is the life of victory and peace. So the abundant life is 14 through 16 of Psalm 91, and in this situation, God is doing the talking. And notice when he says, I will. Because he has set his love on me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. Did you notice the change of voice? Faith creates intimacy between the believer and the Lord. 15 says, I will be with him in trouble. Oh, so there's going to be trouble. Mark it well, trouble has a permitted place. Isaiah 43 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, amen to that. We do have a responsibility when God does his part. No doubt Psalms 91 is focused on God's power and his protection. So what is our responsibility? Well, in verse one, it says, we are to dwell with him. Verse two says, we are to trust in him. Verse 5 says, we are to be bold and not fear. Verse 8 says, we are to observe what God is doing. Verse 14 says, we are to hold fast to him in love. And verse 15 says, we are to call on him. As it is written in the Song of Solomon 2.14, God is speaking again, and he's talking to us. Oh, my dove, in the cleft of the rock, in the secret place of the cliff, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, and your face is lovely. It's the most important place you can dwell, for it is there 
that you will find God's presence, hear his voice, and see his glory. For he resides in the holy place, which is the secret place. Go into the secret place with God today, apart from the world and away from everything. Just enjoy dwelling under the shadow of the Most High. Let us pray. Lord, we know that from Psalm 91, that you are our God. Father, you are our refuge and our secret place, our fortress, our defender, our protector and our shelter. You are our place of safety, our shield, our deliverer. Father, you are our health, our habitation, our rest, our peace, oh, and our tower of strength and our salvation. Father, forgive us when we take our eyes off of you and look at the world for answers, when the answers are right in our hands as we hold your holy Bible. Father, let us hunger after your righteousness each day and meet with you in our secret place. Thank you for covering us and our families with your unbelievable, perfect love and protection. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen.